Exactly. So um, let's pop the hood a little bit and look at how we've built this, right? So this is a conceptual architecture diagram of what Code Engine looks like today. Um, and let me build this up from the bottom up, right? So of course they're physical and virtual machines and these are sitting in IBM data centers around the world, right? Um, as you probably know, in the IBM cloud, we have these multi-zone regions across the world, in Europe, in Asia, in, in, in the Americas. And right now we are live in huh, Frankfurt, we are uh, live in London, in uh, uh, Dallas, of course, and in Tokyo. And there, we're gonna be rolling this out um, across the world and all of our multi-zone regions. So inside of these data centers, we are using a Kubernetes service in the, which is managed by IBM Cloud. Um, and you can think of this conceptually as sort of one gigantic Kubernetes cluster in every one of these MZRs, right? And that's sort of a lot of where, where you know, Simon um, and, the, and the technical and the development team did their magic by sort of building these gigantic Kubernetes clusters up in these um, data centers. Now, of course, we can now run containers on these Kubernetes clusters. And we're using another open source technology called Knative that some of you might be aware of. And Knative allows us to take these containers and deploy these containers. And Knative is the actual tech open source project that we're using to scale these containers, right? You saw Doug deploy a Hello World container, and then he hit it with a lot of traffic. And it scaled from one container to two, to seven, to nine, and so forth. Um, and once the traffic stopped, it scaled back down to zero. And that's exactly Knative that did that part. For the networking layer, we're using Istio that allows us to do some things like green-blue deployment that allows us to sort of do rolling updates of um, of applications, um, different versions of applications. And there was another question in the chat that sort of dealt with, well, how do we do code versioning? That's still being done in Git or some other source code control system. But Istio allows us to do traffic shaping and blue-green deployments. That's something that we're gonna be demoing later on as well. So just to reiterate, we are, have these gigantic Kubernetes clusters. We've put Knative on top of it. We've put Istio on top of it. And that gets us to the point where we can take a container and we hand that container to Code Engine and specifically to Knative um, for it to deploy. But what happened, this is exactly what you saw Doug doing the demo. Doug basically said there's a container image sitting over here, right, um, on Docker Hub, and it just took that container image and deployed it via Knative. But what happens? if you do not have a container image. Maybe you're one of these PaaS developers that bring, that's bringing source code, right? Someone that doesn't really understand what these container images are, how to build them, where to store them. You only have source code. So in that case, we, Code Engine, will have to build the container image for you. We're gonna take your source code, Right? We're going to auto detect that source code, for example, we're using build packs, Paketo open source build packs. What language is that? We're going to combine it with the build pack underneath using open source technologies like Shipwright and you know the actual build packs coming from Paketo. And then we're going to use a Tekton for a little pipeline in here that will actually generate a container image and put it into a registry for you without you really understanding necessarily how that works, right? You just present source code, we build the container. And at that point, hey, world is good again. We have a container. We can again hand it over to Knative for Knative to deploy, run, and scale that container. So what you're seeing here is you're sort of seeing Code Engine as a, as a collection of open source technologies that we install, manage, secure, update, operate for you as the user. And you as the user come to us, Code Engine, with different artifacts. You can bring a container, which is what Doug showed you. You can also run batch jobs. That's gonna be the next demo. You can bring a source code and we'll build the container, and that's gonna be a demo as well, right? And you can just bring us a snippet of a source code a function like you would do in AWS Lambda, for example. And that allows you, as the user of Code Engine, to use sort of the level of abstraction that's right for you. You can choose to use containers and bring containers to Code Engine. You have very fine-grained control, 
Or you can go up the abstraction layer level and say, I don't care about containers. I don't even know how to build them. I'm going to bring source code or even only a function. And that we allow all of these artifacts on that exact same platform. And as you can see here now, we're treating them all the same. Now, there was a question in the chat earlier on, hey, do I have access as a user? Do I have access to that Kubernetes clusters? Like, can I like install stuff on it? And the answer is mm, yes and no. First of all, front and center, we do not really put that Kubernetes cluster in front of customers or in front of our users because many of our users, right, think of the function user, think of the source code, uh, PaaS type of user. They don't even know what Kubernetes is and they don't want to know about Kubernetes, right? However, if you understand how to interact with Kubernetes, right, maybe via kube control, or you know how to interact with Knative, maybe via the CLI, we don't hide that from you. We allow you to use those methods to interact sort of short circuit and interact directly with these technologies if you choose to do that. However, some things, of course, we can't allow, right? These are, as I said, think of this as like one giant Kubernetes cluster, and we have to isolate the various tenants, the various users on that cluster. So, and we do that by namespace. So when you go into Code Engine and you create a project, what you're really doing is you're creating a namespace on that gigantic Kubernetes cluster. Of course, we can allow you to reach outside of that namespace because you know that's where the other users are. So while you can interact with Kubernetes, while you can interact with Knative, we secure it in a way that you can only interact with sort of with your portion of that cluster. Again, I want to be very clear, for most of our users, that is not what they're looking for. One of the value adds of Code Engine is here that we hide all this complexity from our users. Okay, next slide, and then we'll go right back into the next demo. So this is what this space looks like um, in, in, in the various cloud service providers, right? Because AWS Lambda already came up in the, in, in the chat, so I thought we'll, I, we'll talk about this a little bit. Think back amongst, uh, uh, to the four developer types, right? The container savvy developer, the pushing source code type has developer, you know, the batch job person, and then you know, the, the modern functions developer. If you look at what the other service providers are doing, they are, depending on the use case, they are asking you to choose specific services for that use case, right? So I don't know, let's take AWS as an example because it came up in the chat. If you want scale to zero and you want to, um, Know, bring a bring a function to AWS. Well, of course, Lambda, right? That that's the service for you. It's their serverless function as a service. Great. However, maybe you want that to be long running, right? Maybe you want it to be running for hours. Maybe you want to run it for days, or maybe you want really high limits in terms of memory that you allow for that specific function. Well, that can't be done, right? There are certain limits and how long these functions run. There are certain limits and how big they can be, right? So uh, maybe AWS Lambda is not the right choice then for you. Well, if you want something long running, right, then maybe Fargate is the right option for you. Fargate does allow you to run indefinitely, just like Code Engine does. But Fargate does not allow you to scale to zero. So now you're sort of stuck here, right? You want the scale to zero from Lambda, and you want the high limits and run forever on Fargate, but you can't get both in one service. So you have to compromise, which is awkward, right? You're gonna have to sort of cut up your workloads. With Code Engine, you don't have to make any of those compromises. It's one platform. And you can have run forever, you can have high limits, and at the same time, just like a function, scale to zero. Right? So one of the value adds here is that we're providing is the sing, not just a single user experience, it is also no compromises. You don't have to sort of slot yourself into one of these different types of silos. You can have the best of all worlds in Code Engine. Okay, um, any questions right now before we hand it back to Doug to, for our next demo? I'm not seeing anything new in the chat right now. Unfortunately, I can't help you there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Doug. Yeah, no, no, nothing new in the chat. So then I think we'll we'll, we'll go right to the next demo.